Join us as we return to Star Realms with a review of Star Realms Frontiers. Thanks, Wise Wizard Games, for letting us grab a review copy of this, both to talk about here on the show, as well as giving us something familiar yet new to play while at Origins 2023. So Star Realms was designed by Rob Doherty and Darwin Castle and took the gaming world by storm back when it was first published by Wise Wizard Games in 2014. Now, Star Realms Frontiers, which is what we're looking at today, is an updated and refreshed starter box or entry part into the world of Star Realms. This was released in 2018 after a successful Kickstarter, and I think it didn't hit retail till 2019. Well, this Star Realms box set can be played by one to four players and features several different modes of play, which includes solo and cooperative modes. In addition to being a fully complete and playable card game on its own, it also works as an expansion for everything that came before it, as well as being able to be expanded upon itself by all previous Star Realms releases. Now, for those of you who don't know it, Star Realms is a deck-building card game of space battles. Players use trade to acquire new ships and bases from a variable market, and they use combat to damage their opponents. Now, one of the biggest things Star Realms is known for is its innovative, at the time, combo system, where many cards are much better if played along with other cards of the same faction. Now, Star Realms Frontiers includes everything you need to play for up to four players, including a completely brand new 80 card trade deck. This is another game like the Deadlies that we picked up both to review as well to give us something to play while at Origins 2023. So we don't have an unboxing video to share with you. So Star Realms Frontiers comes in a pretty small card box with a cardboard insert and it's made to hold two stacks of cards. And on top of that is the rule book and a set of oversized cards that are the size of the box. In addition to the 80 new cards forming the new trade deck, you also get two authority tracking cards per player, starting sets of Vipers and Scouts for four players, and a set of Explorer cards. The oversized cards are challenge cards, which are used when playing solo or cooperatively in teams. There are eight of these. The card quality here is exactly what we've come to expect from Wise Wizard, and the rulebook is the most clear and concise set of Star Realms rules to date. Now, just in case anyone listening hasn't played Star Realms, let's give a high-level overview of play. Starting with the basic default two-player battling game um, that is before this set came out, that, that was just a two-player game. We'll get to the other stuff and all the variants how to play in a bit. So each player starts with 50 authority, the hit points in this game, and a deck containing eight scouts and two vipers. The 80 trade cards are shuffled and six cards are flipped face up to become the market. The deck of explorer cards is placed next to the market. The first player draws their three cards, their opponent draws five, and the game begins. Now players play their cards in any order. Cards generate either trade, which is used to buy cards from the market, or combat, which reduces your opponent's authority, which is the goal of the game, or it generates both. So in addition to pretty much every card, you will have, a, uh, will have additional abilities. The cards in Star Realms each belong to one of four factions, each of which has its own theme. Red machine cult cards tend to let you prune your deck as well as comboing to do big damage. Yellow Star Empire cards feature a lot of cards that either let you draw more cards or that force your opponent to discard cards from their hands. The green blob cards can do massive damage, especially when you can play groups of them at a time, and they're the only cards that can manipulate the trade row. Finally, there's the Trade Federation, which is in blue and includes many bases for defense, as well as many cards that heal your authority. Now, most of these cards have abilities that go off only if played along other cards of the same faction, some even requiring you to play at least two additional cards of the same faction, and this was new to us in Frontiers. Now, when you acquire new cards by spending your trade resource, those cards go into your discard pile. And most cards, when played, are discarded at the end of your turn. Bases are an exception to this. These cards stay in play, forming a defensive tableau. Outposts are special bases that you have to be destroyed before you or any of your other bases can be attacked. Standard bases can be attacked only if you have no outposts. Both types are discarded when defeated. Finally, some cards have crash abilities. You can use these after playing and using everything else on the card, including any faction combos that they set off. It all happens, but then you can trash the card. They're usually powerful abilities, but when you trash a card, it's actually removed from play. 
Play goes back and forth with players activating their cards, creating combos, and buying new cards until one player is reduced to zero authority and the other player wins. Now, other modes of play included in this version of Star Realms include free-for-all. You got three to six players. Note for six, you'll need some other Star Realms starter set like the original base game or Colony Wars or two copies of Frontiers, though I don't recommend that. Just go pick up one of the other sets. This uses the usual rules with the first player starting with three cards, the next with four and then five for the rest. And then you just play as normal and attack whoever you want. Anyone can attack anyone. The last player standing wins. Hunter also plays up to six, but with these rules, you can only attack the player on your left and bases of the player on your right. It's still the last man standing, though. I really like the, the brilliance of you can attack the bases of the player on your right, so you open them up to their player on their right. Now, Hunter First Blood is exactly the same as Hunter, except the game ends when one player is eliminated instead of being last man standing, and it's the player to the right of the player eliminated who wins the game. Next is Hydra for four or six players. This is a team game where teammates share a set amount of authority. Each has their own decks, discards, etc., but teammates can share, trade, and combat freely between each other, and an outpost by one player protects the entire team until defeated. Emperor is a six-player team game of Star Realms that has existed since the original set, where each team has an Emperor flanked by their two teammates, which are their Admirals. Admirals can only attack the Admiral opposite them. If one is defeated, the opposite Admiral can then attack the Emperor because there's a way in. Emperors on their own can attack anyone they want. Now, a team wins by taking out the opposing emperor. Now, a cool rule addition is that players can spend one trade to move a card from their discard to any ally's discard. Next, we have the raid for three to six players, a one verse many way of playing. One player is chosen as boss. The other players are the raiders trying to take them down. The boss has a larger than usual hand of cards and extra authority. And there's a neat rule where damage to the boss boss's bases carries over through Raider turn, uh, so players can team up to destroy a base. Finally, we get to what was the highlight of this set for me, and that is the challenge cards, which give you solo and cooperative ways to play Star Realms. Here, you select a challenge card to face, then read the setup rules on the back and get the game going. Then there are special rules for each challenge. Now, there's lots of these. There's eight different cards, and each has its own rules, and kind of like our description of the, the quests and... and um, Castle Panic Deluxe, I'm not going to get into the details here, but some of the things you can expect to see is bosses with authority levels based on the number of players, where you're just going to, they have 50 authority times the number of players. Um, the actions the boss do on the boss's turn being based on what cards are up in the trade row, or other sets where the boss has their own deck they play from where you're going to reveal cards and have effects. Each challenge can be played at one of four difficulty levels, adding a ton of replayability to this cooperative way to play Star Realms. Now, it's worth noting that Star Realms Frontiers includes all of the previous release challenge cards, including promos. While some of these are reprints, there are some new ones. But if you own Star Realm Frontiers, you have all of the possible challenge cards for the game currently. No, I think the important things to know about Star Realms Frontiers versus other potential Star Realms starting points is that it plays up to four players out of the box features an all-new 80-card trade deck, and includes full solo and cooperative rules that use those eight challenge cards. So it was the solo and cooperative rules that really caught my attention here. Now, I'm a long-time fan of Star Realms. I actually got to see the game the year it came out at Origins, Origins 2014. We actually stopped by the Wise Wizard game booth mainly to say hi to a friend of ours, Wayne the Star Wars guy, Homefleet, who I know some of our listeners also know. He showed us this new deck-building game, it was something so different from Dominion because that was still the hotness at the time. And the big things being the variable market, the fact that the market changed every turn, you weren't buying the same cards every turn, and that awesome faction-based combo system. We were instantly hooked. Before Dean and I finished our first game, we told Wayne to go grab us a copy because we were taking it home. Now, I didn't find it that early, but I was introduced to it first online before I finally got to play in person with Mo. I'm still happy to fire up the Steam version and play it to this day. Yeah, we, we played, didn't we play a bunch of games on Extra Life last year? So at least last year, within the last year, I've been playing this. Mm -hmm. Now, I played a ton of this game, like over the coming months and years after getting it. Eventually picked up two more starters because I really wanted to try that Emperor mode. And I remember playing it at the CG Realm. Uh, then the app came out. And while everyone I know that played Star Realm swapped to playing online, 
And there was a G plus community of Star Realms players. And I, I honestly couldn't tell you how many games I played, but I think it was in the thousands. The combo system in particular is really what has made Star, Star Realms as powerful and captivating as it has been for all these years. Now, at some point, I couldn't even tell you when it just kind of wore off. Um, I, I still play now and then, but not as much as I used to. I think the big thing that happened is I switched from having an Apple phone to an Android phone and I lost my progress or some of the stuff I paid to unlock wasn't there anymore. I don't, I don't know, whatever it was. I just kind of got out of Star Realms. Now, possibly since we just don't play any uh, any games over and over again, that also couldn't help. Yeah, I'm sure. Maybe that was it. Maybe I started reviewing more games, so I was more having to keep up with new hotness and try new stuff. I'm not sure exactly why it happened. It, it, that doesn't matter. What matters is Origins 2023. Walking around the hall and I need a break. So here's a, here's a pro tip for anyone at a con that if you need a break, if you're a bigger guy, you have back pain, whatever, you're just tired from walking around, you're carrying lots of stuff, you need to sit it down. Best way to do that is to do a demo. Sit down at a demo table. Pick a game that's got a fairly long demo so you can get a little bit of a break. So at one point, I needed one of these breaks, and Deanna was with me, and we sat down at the Wise Wizard booth. Now, at that time, their demo team was really busy on the other side. Like, they had a big booth this year. They were kind of like over on the other side. I think they were showing off copies of Kapow. And we were just sitting out at, at a table, and I looked. I'm like, oh, we're at a Star Realms table. And I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, while fans of Star Realms, we had played it a lot so didn't really see much reason to grab more after all we already had a lot to review yeah i wasn't there in the booth to try star realms or anything i literally i wanted to sit down for a bit and, and like put down my bags so we're sitting there and we're chatting and i noticed this box right and it's, i'm like oh that's bigger than the normal star realms box and i flip over i'm like what's the big deal what's what's frontiers and i'm like oh well, that's cool it's four player i'm like so instead of you buy the because the old game was always you bought it and there was enough in there to play two players i'm like Oh, four player of the box. And I'm like, it's kind of strange because it always seemed to me like a two player game. And then I know that it includes solo and cooperative rules. And I'm like, whoa, wait, cooperative, cooperative Star Realm with four players. Because one of the other reasons Star Realms doesn't get played as much around here is it's two player only. So I don't bring that out to public play events because then I'm just sitting with one person. I try to go for three, four player games. Now, I know the app had solo ways to play. And I remember something maybe even identical to the challenge cards. But I totally missed that the physical version now had a co-op way to play. I can now play my favorite deck builder of all time, one of my favorites. So I grabbed the rules and I started reading. And D and I sat down and tried one of the challenges. I don't remember which one it was, but it was one of the ones where at the end of the round, cards wiped off of the, 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 the market, new ones came up, and what those new ones were made it do different things. And, and I remember we lost badly. We double checked the rules. We realized we we were supposed to play as a Hydra team or something like that. And we played extreme. So we tried again. Co-op is indeed a big new change for Star Realms and certainly worthy of more attention. So that second game we won. Um, there was some amusing parts where like staff came over and wanted to teach us the demo. And I'm like, can you help us play cooperative? And they're like, oh, I don't know the cooperative rules. I'm just here to teach two player. I'm sorry. And I'm like, do you mind if we keep playing? And they're like, no, no, go ahead. So we played, and, and you know what? I, I don't know who won. I can't remember who won that second match. Not who, but I, I, we might have lost again. I don't know. What mattered is how much fun we had. Like, it did the ride the bike thing. Everyone said, you know, once you get back on a bike, you just remember. It was like that. Like, I was just, this is Star Realms. I know exactly how to play this game. I know what cards I want. I know what the green cards do if I collect green, and I know if I want to thin my deck, I buy red. But it was all new stuff. Like I wasn't seeing, I couldn't pull the old combos I played a million times anymore. It was all new cards. It was new and fresh, but still infinite, in, like intimately familiar. It was so awesome. I like just, I, it just felt great. I, I had this entirely new deck of 80 cards and this new way to play. It was a quick swap from, oh, how nice Star Realms to, oh, gotta have more Star Realms. Yeah, no, seriously. I immediately fly Debbie over and I'm like, Debbie, can we take a copy of this? She's like, yeah, 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 go ahead. So I, I just, I wanted to bring it home and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to show Sean because Sean wasn't there at the demo. Today. It was D and I, and like, we went over to Barley's for lunch and I'm like, oh, check it out. Cooperative Star Realms. And I, I, Sean, I'm sure had the same feeling, right? And, and since bringing home, I have now played it many rooms, many times using the Frontiers box. Now D and I have played two player. Um, we tried some of the variants. We tried solo. We tried co-op. I'll admit I haven't gotten six players together to play Emperor. Um, the problem is I'd have to go find my old cards and split them up because I mixed up three sets all together. I introduced the game to my kids who both love it. 
Um, absolutely adore it. Actually, Genevieve loved it. We played a game out in Cava and she was like, oh, I really like this one, dad. And and I brought it out to public play events. I, I'm I'm hooked again. Like, like I feel like it's back in 2014 and I'm like, check out this deck builder. And like, yeah, Star Realms. No, 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 no. You, did, you can try it anyway. It really is that good a game, even if you need a reminder once in a while after a little bit of time away from it. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Now, one thing I did learn after we brought Star Wars Frontiers home is that I'm not the only one late to the party. Because pretty much every time I break this game out, someone's like, whoa, what, what is that? So so a great example of this, we're at the barbershop bar. I'm playing the game. I think it was with Gwen at the time. And Ian, who's the uh, one of the owners of the CG Realm, and he co-hosts the event with us, a big Star Realms train comes over. He's like, ah, Star Realms. And then he goes, wait, is that a new trader? Is that wait? What what is that freighter? What 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 card? What what Star Realms is this? And I show him the box. He's like, I've never seen this. And then he was like, so excited. Like I I'm I'm sound like a Star Realms fanboy. You should have seen Ian like bouncing at this event because oh my god, new Star Realms cards. And he immediately took pictures of it. Then went back to a store and ordered in copies and has been sharing it with the local gamers. It's really amusing the journey people take as most seem to have sort of moved on. Again, Star Realms isn't hot newness anymore. Uh, while we all loved it and remember it fondly, to find out that it is new again and there are new styles of play really reinvigorates that love that mm -hmm. didn't go away so much as just kind of got put onto a back shelf. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So the main thing I want to do now, which I hope we're doing here, um, that I hope this review helps, is to let people know, like us, who played back in 2014, 2015, played the heck out of the app, that Star Realms is still a thing, that there's still stuff coming out for it, and that Star Realms Frontier is a thing that exists. I hope more people learn about this way to play it. Because if you're a long-term Star Realms fan, especially one who hasn't kept up with the latest releases and changes and promo packs, go pick up a copy of Frontiers. This is the game you love, presented in a new way, with an all new set of cards. Like, I can't stress that out. These are 80 brand new cards. Every ship is completely different. You've never seen it before. That is going to feel comfortingly familiar, well, new and exciting at the same time. If you ever loved Star Realms, it's worth returning to it with some new, fresh content. Now, perhaps more importantly, though, I think Frontiers is a fantastic way to introduce someone to Star Realms for the first time. This was the great box to introduce to my kids, especially because I have two and we could play three player co-op. I couldn't have done that with the original set. This is a great entry point for those who missed all the hype and everyone playing back in 2014 and on. This box set gives you everything you need to play Star Realms for with one to four players. The most up to date version of the rules and a surprisingly large number of ways to play, which of course includes solo and cooperative. It can be hard to introduce someone to a game that you're going to kick their butt in. I know that's how Mo introduced <laughs> it to me. Co-op is such a more friendly way to get mm -hmm. them addicted before crushing them beneath your boots. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I've been playing thousands of games of Star Realms. I, I tend to be quite good at it. Um, but if you have played Star Realms in the past, and you know what? If you got sick of seeing the same cards over and over, or maybe... You didn't like that it's two player only or mainly a two player game. It, it really only worked two players. Or if you just didn't like the direct player versus player conflict, this is a game where you're attacking the other player, right? You're playing games like Magic the Gathering style dueling here. You might want to give Frontiers a shot. Find a friend with a copy. Ask your FLGS if they've got a copy where you can do a demo. Well, feeling familiar, this definitely offers more options than the original two player version did. Now, if you forgot about Star Realms, but get that happy memory activation hearing about it, then Frontiers is probably exactly what you need. Now, if you have the opposite effect and you hear Star Realms like, ugh, Star Realms, this is still Star Realms. Star Realms Frontiers may have some new ways to play and all new set of cards, which us fans are all excited about. This is still just Star Realms in a new box with new play formats. Basic gameplay is still the same, and if you didn't dig it then, you're not going to now. Well, that's it for our return to the world of Star Realms, a journey that started almost 10 years ago <laughs> with a game that still manages to capture our attention now, especially with the new Star Realms Frontiers box, which currently has us all hooked on sci-fi deck building <laughs> yet again. So what's an older game that's still around and putting out content that you used to love 
and you're tempted to return to one you haven't actually kept up with. An old favorite having you go, huh, oh, that game's still out? Oh, they're still putting out expansions for us? I would love to hear about that game in the comments. If you enjoyed this review and any of our other content, uh, trick-taking related or other card games, whatever it may be, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop.